Uh, again, another very good uh, answer. Um, uh, next thing I'm going to move on to is why is uh, parapsychology so uh, controversial? Okay, that's an interesting one. There were two groups of people coming at parapsychology. It's what I'd call organised religion in a sense, but that's not, well, that's not fair to all organised religions. Some people have very open minds on that. The idea is that anything to do with this is of the devil, and you should black have magic, black magic, magic, and whatever. So you've got that idea that you're messing with things you shouldn't. The progress of humanity over the last few 20, 30 thousand years is because we've messed with things we shouldn't mess with, or we've been told we shouldn't. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we get the rigid scientific people who say they know everything. Yeah? Now, I was saying, we've got people like, um, what's his name? Mr. Dworkin, who's the scientist, who says, there is nothing else, this is it. Yeah? Well, they're coming from a perspective which is almost as vivid and as rigid as some of the more religious people who say it's real. Now, they talk about something called statistical significance. Yeah? Um, proving that one thing affects another. Yeah? Now, the difficulty is, how do we prove that one thing affects another? I can't statistically prove anything. I can say that something happens, and that happens after it. Yeah? But they're different. I'm going to give you two big words here you now. Correlation and causation. Right? A correlation is when something happens. Like if Ian drinks too much beer tonight, right, he will fall over. I'm sure he's not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> not on school. Not on school. <laughs> they're correlated, they're connected, but they don't necessarily cause anything. Okay. There are people who can drink that same amount of beer. Same conditions as Ian or whatever, yeah. and it, it is not. There are phenomena where people um, um, experience something in an entirely different way. Was, and so you cannot prove that one thing causes another. If you're measuring the existence of uh, gravity, yeah, you can notice that things hit the ground. But it took them a long, long time to realise that if I dropped this cup and dropped this pen, they would both fall to earth at the same rate. Yes. Now, what's causing that? Yeah. We don't even know if we've got gravity right. We know there's something called gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're all the time trying to explain what causes what. Does it cause? What does cause mean? Yeah? Yeah. 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 So you've got one lot coming from the idea of faith and one lot coming from that, that they've got certainty. You know? right. In the 15th or 16th century, René Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. Now that's about as far as we could get in the last three, four hundred years. You know? um, but now we're beginning to say, when you think, what is it that thinks? Yeah. Yeah? Is it I? There's a whole part of you that's unconscious. What causes what? Yeah. My grandmother believed if you brought Holly into the house before Christmas, Yeah. But if you brought it into the house for Christmas, she would kick up so much fuss, it would be an hour. The idea of uh, the Christian crucifixion, yeah, the dying God, happened in Norse mythology. It happened in all, they're all interpretations. All we can do is interpret. We can't be certain. Scientific explanation explains part of the world. But it can't explain it all. It makes guesses. It's the same with superstition. I mean, yeah. people have, have irrational superstitions yeah. where they believe that if you leave your train notes on, on a table, yeah. uh, that, that's a sign of bad luck. And uh, if you see, I don't know, a black cat, yeah. that's a sign of good luck. But it may simply be, uh, it may simply be that if an event occurs long enough, in certain ways when you have bad experiences, um, that that causes bad luck. Next time it happens, you think you're going to get bad luck. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there are sorts of there are statistical evidences where people have stood in front of gambling machines, thought positively, and they've noticed a very slight improvement of two or three percent in winnings. Mm. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Now it's
What's that? Sixth sense? Is that correlation? Is that causation? Was it there are, yeah, are the things that follow one another, or do they cause one another? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In Latin, there's no word for I think. You say ergo. That means thinking. Yeah. How do you think about being you now? Uh, How do you know? That's the interesting point, you see. How do we measure what you experience? And these, this is the whole area. We've come out of a, we've come out of a world where we believe in scientific certainty. Mm. into a world where we no longer know, because of quantum physics, how the world works. This is why you've got this fascinating uprush yeah, of things, mm. like parapsychology, the growth of ecology, the growth of women's equality. People wanted to change the world. Yeah? They've developed new ideas to interpret the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is what some of these things are very similar to. Why is it that women are better at sensing emotions than men? Simply because men are told not to. We tend to be educated. We shut it off. And we shut it off. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I sometimes have a sixth sense. Um, I, I can sometimes say, well, sometimes it's good to ring. Partly because I know that's usually the time they ring, but other times... That gut instinct. That gut instinct. I think I've really yeah. had that. I think I've yeah, me too. And it's like you've got your phone and it's like mm. a couple of seconds before ring. You could say it's, it's a habit. Mm. I'm to check my emails. Yes. But then, literally, a couple of seconds, they keep the phone and it's like, oh, I'm sure right. that. But sometimes, when the unexpected happens, you know, um, and, and you don't think it's going to happen, something, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's very strong evidence that if you believe positively, you act positively in certain ways, you will see things. There's a guy yes. called Richard Wiseman who did an experiment for lucky and unlucky people. And he did a test where he left 20 pound notes. Okay. okay. And he found that people who considered themselves lucky spotted them more than people who considered themselves unlucky. So again, is that open in that section? Is, it, is that that they're just noticing more? Or mm. is it they're opening themselves up to more positive thinking? And that's effectively, we're studying this phenomenon. So po positive outlooks, good luck. Yeah. yeah. And maybe not so positive then, but the bad luck. Yeah, sure. If you spend your time saying, I'm no good, I'm not good, I yeah. can't do this, you... It shows. It shows. Uh, if, I came, so, so if I came into your bank yes. next week and I said, my God, you look ill. And I came in every day and told you you looked ill. Every time you saw me in future, after yeah. about three weeks, you'd feel good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the power of suggestion would be like that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, your confidence is getting affected as well. Yeah. That? And, uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So these are things you need to look at. And, you know, there's so much in power I call yeah. I reckon I could talk to you about lots of things. I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a whole hour in talking about things like telepathy, past life regression, um, sixth sense, uh, death phenomena, you know, all these sorts of things, quantum things. If the world is energy, yeah. and everything is energy as quantum physics says, then of course you can interpret things. Of course, yeah, definitely. That's how we learn to interpret. Everybody interprets things on a different level, mm -hmm. yeah. and then sometimes we learn, well, we do learn from each other. So, yeah, it's definitely worth uh, digging yeah, out. We're always learning as well. Every trip that we go on, we're always learning from each other. But maybe we can hook up again on yeah. that again, That's definitely. Yeah. Um, I think the, the last uh, question, I wonder, uh, maybe more of your views, actually. Uh, what yeah. do you think about sleep paralysis? And there's uh, one particular thing I've got. No, I've never actually had it. Um, this it's seen this old hack, but I've had sleep paralysis. I was talking to people start to come in here um, through. I was going through, like I said, to a very emotional time in my life, yes. and it'd be stress or whatever. And I experienced sleep paralysis uh, firsthand, and it was, I got to be honest, it was quite uh, quite scary. Like you know, it, it is. There's um, what we have to remember is that when we sleep throughout the night, we go in 90 minute cycles of sleep. We go from uh, REM sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep to non rapid eye movement sleep. Now, non rapid eye movement sleep refreshes the body. Okay. When we dream in non rapid eye movement sleep, the dreams are more, they're more ghostly, they're more what you would have to remember them. Um, sometimes, if we are woken for some strange reason, it takes time for our body to recover. Um, so, we might appear be paralysed at that time. There might be, we might be breathing so deep, we might not have enough oxygen. That okay. might be part of it. Um, and 
there's another part of sleep called uh, hypnagogic sleep, which is the, about a few minutes before you're dropping off, where you see faces just before you drop to sleep. You're actually, Freud was of the opinion, you're actually seeing images reflected on the back of the, eye, the, back of the eyelids through closed eyes. And there's that sort of sleep. Um, what may have been happening, if you're highly sensitive, if you're highly emotional at the time, you may be um, dreaming of particular things, you may be processing things, and you just feel overwhelmed. We do know that between 4 and 6 in the morning is a time when traditionally, according to lots of belief systems, and people tend to slip away, when it used to be believed that the world were open to the other world. Was it an early morning experience? I think there was about around about three. Around yeah. about three. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, that, it's that time of the morning, it's that early time of the morning. And that might be something to do with it. Yeah? Yeah. It's quite interesting. There's, there's, there's a whole lot of phenomena about sleep and dreams yeah. themselves. And sleepwalking as well as I know. Sleepwalking, yes. Um, where we just don't know um, what's happening. There was that really tragic case of that guy who strangled his wife. Um, yeah, the, the yeah. Alone, yes. Yeah, something uh, yeah. And there may be certain things that tell us we're dreaming so we don't act them out. But we've all seen a dog dreaming. Yes, they move their legs. They move their legs and so whatever. And, uh, moan and whatever. Yeah. And perhaps, our, and we've seen our significant others perhaps make, speak in their sleep. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think quite a few. It was told once by, uh, my sister, that uh, when me and my brother were younger, we would share a room. Mm. That uh, between us, we would have good, structured conversations, and we probably could have constructed, I don't know, for example, a car or something, you know, sleep, because it's a detailed way we were talking. Yeah. Like. I mean, there's two, there's two or three cases like that, just quickly to tell you. First of all, there's the guy, I think, who developed, what's his name, Kikul. He, he developed the structure of the benzene atom, how it fitted together with all the electrons and the neutrons and the protons mm. and all that things, because he dreamt of a thing. There was the very famous case of uh, Shelley, who dreamt a poem in Xanadu did Kubla Khan and Mighty Pleasure Don't Decree. And he woke up and he remembered it and he wrote it down. Uh, and there's the other case, which has slipped my mind, but there are cases where dreams have actually helped people break through using scientific rationality. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. You know, James, who invented the steam engine? There was a what? Uh, what? Was what? Just what? He, he, was, he was sleeping by the fire and he kept seeing the, the kettle boil. He saw the steam pushing the top of the kettle. Okay, and then he's... And then he had... And in that half state, he realised that he could do something with that. It's crazy. And there's, a, there, and there's a writer called... The, there's an old musician who, who the devil appeared and played a piece of music for him. And he looked down and he called it the devil's thermometer. So there is a role in creativity, there's a role in rational thought. The problem is the mind is not rational. No. Ten percent of our mind is observing what we're doing. The rest of it is thinking, do I feel like a beard or a flat head of coffee? Yeah, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's processing. So we cannot answer that question of certainty because of that. That's why this is important. I think that's uh, a very good question and answer to well done. Very, yeah. very, uh, very well. Happy. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say thank you first of all to uh, Martin Shrewsbury. And uh, that will be on the show uh, again, Thank hopefully. You. And uh, to all the viewers who uh, tuned in tonight, if you'd like to tune in next time, uh, ne sorry, <laughs> next week, same time, where we'll have Anthony Cherrywood um, answering some questions on uh, shamanism. So uh, see you this time, bye, well, next week. And thank you very much.